I've been trying to understand the driving ideas underneath this globalist utopian tyranny that seems to be developing from the top down. And I think it's driven at least in part by this religious vision that I already described, you know, that you have to construe culture itself, especially industrial culture, as the tyrannical father raping and pillaging everything in its way, which is unbelievably dangerous way to think, too one-sided. And uh, the, the, the idea that you have to impose limits to growth on people in order to have a sustainable planet. And that's allied with a view that probably stems all the way back to people like Paul Ehrlich in the 1960s, who really believe, really believe, truly, that maybe the planet should only have 500 million people on it, or a billion, you know, in relative poverty, or two billion, barely scrape and buy because otherwise they're going to be wrecking everything and you know controlled by some top-down authority that makes bloody well sure that no one's consuming too much and so when i look at ideas like that that first assumption you know the planet has too many people on it it's like i don't like to hear people say that because when i hear that i think okay buddy who exactly are you thinking about getting rid of oh right. well it's not like that it's like yeah it's like that it has to be like it, that. it is absolutely like that and so you know, it's easy to get all paranoid conspiracy theorist about the WEF, say, and maybe there's some utility in that. But, you know, I don't think anybody's sitting at Davos going, well, we, are, we got to scrap 7 billion people. But if the underlying narrative is the one I just described, you know, virginal planet, tyrannical patriarchy and rapacious individual, and you believe, well, we're overpopulated, like Paul Ehrlich has believed since really literally the mid-1960s, then... How is it not going to be that the policies that you craft, stemming from that narrative, are colored by the belief that there's far too many people? And like, I've really felt that I've been at war for the last six months. And I would say it's war because what I observed happening in Europe when I was there last was that, well, and you can see this, you don't have to be in Europe to see it, but it's more direct if you're there, is that it's pretty damn clear that the globalist utopians are willing to sacrifice the poor for the sake of the planet. You know, and they're doing that by cranking energy prices up through the roof, and that means that people die. Lomberg has estimated that three, maybe you have to turn your thermostat down by three degrees, right? Save the planet. We don't have enough energy. We'll pay you not to use your electricity between five and six, which is what they're doing in the UK. You turn your damn thermostat down three degrees, that sounds like nothing. But if you're old, that radically increases the probability that you'll get a respiratory disease and die. You know, and if the Europeans would have had a cold winter, and that could still happen, Lomberg estimated it'd wipe out 135,000 people. It's like, well, you know, we're just making energy more expensive. It's like, what do you mean you're just doing that? So imagine the economic system. It's a pyramid. There's a bunch of people at the top. They have almost all the money. That's par for the course for any productive system. Any system that's productive ends up with a distribution like that. It's pretty, it's like a law of nature. And then you move farther down the pyramid till you get down to the bottom where most of the people are, and they're barely clinging on to the edge of reality, right? It doesn't take much of a crisis to tip them into, you know, death. And then you crank up energy prices. Well, what happens is you just take a bunch of those people at the bottom of the distribution, the poor that the left is so, you know, hypothetically concerned with, and you just, they're just done. They go from barely hanging on to not hanging on, and their kids go from having some ghost of a chance of opportunity to having none. And I could see this coming. You really saw it happening in Germany and the UK, you know, where we have this absolute rat's nest of way more expensive energy. And, and this is where it gets extremely perverse. You know, you might say, okay, look, we have to save the future poor. And so now some of the present poor are going to have to suffer. Well, that's convenient for you if you happen not to be one of those poor people, but let's give the devil his due and say, okay. It's like, that'd be fine with me. Not really. That'd be fine with me if the consequence of your actions, raising energy prices, for example, actually pro produced an improvement in those things you wanted to improve. So, for example, energy is more expensive, but now the air is cleaner. But that isn't what's happened in Germany. Right. What's happened in Germany is energy is like five times as expensive and the coal plants are back on. So it's like even by your own criteria for success, you failed and you did it at the expense of the poor. And, you know, the World Bank estimated, I don't remember how many months ago, it's probably nine months ago, that we're putting 350 million people at, on the brink of starvation because we're cranking energy prices up. 
And so for me, it's like that's 350 million people. That's three times as many as the communists killed, you know, in their six decades of trying. And if you're if your cure for the planet is, well, you know, we got to put 350 million poor people in jeopardy just so that things are hypothetically better in 100 years, I think. Yeah, I don't think so, buddy. And also, it's a little bit too convenient for me that your prescriptions to save the planet are accompanied by this insistence that the only way forward to that is to give you all the power. It's like mm. there's a bit of a moral hazard in that, don't you think? It's like I'm just saving the planet. Give me all the power. It's like you want to save the planet or do you want the power? And let's, let's put the, first, the second one first because the probability that you're a saint or the Messiah is pretty damn low. So that's the danger of the Davos crowd.